It is always a good time to go to the beach. Daytona Beach, that is. Especially when there's something happening just a few miles from that famous area right there right here at the World Centre of Racing. Hi folks, Lee Diffie and Ricky Carmichael with you. Something pretty special happened this evening because this five-time Daytona Supercross winner is now a dual five-time winner because Eli Tomac, the reigning Monster Energy AMA Supercross champ, tied RC's record. That happened. Aaron Plessinger got his first 450 uh, podium in a main event. And then you've got the championship getting closer and closer and some post-race interesting words from championship leader Ken Roxon to, uh, uh, to uh, Cooper Webb for yeah. what went down on the opening lap. What's the biggest headline for you? Well, I think two things. Cooper Webb gained more uh, more positions on Ken Roxon for the championship. He's two markers back. And then I think Eli Tomac obviously tying my record. There was certainly a story. He's given some validation to his series, and he's pulled himself back in to play here. Now, he's got a lot of wood to chop. However, he's back in the game again, and uh, I think he's going to be really good going into Arlington. There's an amazing statistic that suggests uh, the rider that comes comes out of the Daytona Supercross typically goes on uh, as the championship leader goes on to become the champion. What, where, what's your feeling on Roxon and where he's at at the moment? Well, history with Ken Roxon is he's always started the first half of the season off really, really well. And then unfortunately for him right now, it, it tails off from the second half of the series. So he has got to keep that trend of the first, of the, he's got to be better at the end of the series. He's got to turn that around from years past because if not, it's going to be really, really hard. And I just know guys like Cooper Webb and Eli Tomac are historically better the second half of the season. So he's got a lot of work ahead. Sounds like he's ready to go and play some games. Yeah. But I don't think there's any games that need to be played. He's got to go out there and win and stick it to these guys. It'll be interesting when we turn up in Arlington, Texas uh, for the next residency next weekend. Well, what were your thoughts on the night? I think that what's going through my head, Lee, is just um, the building of confidence with certain riders. Uh, I guess I'm specifically talking about Eli Tomac and Aaron Plessinger, um, because it could be a real turning point for both of them. Obviously, very different things that they're trying to achieve at the moment. Um, but just incredible what, what a win can do, what a podium can do. And like Ricky said there, what's that going to lead on to? When uh, you and I spoke to Eli earlier in the week there, he did say that this was a must win, this was critical, this one, and these upcoming rounds, as you said, Ricky Arlington, and he mentioned Atlanta as well, were gonna be more suited to his style of riding. Well, this is kind of like validation of that, isn't it? He's got this one done now, he's got it under the belt, he said, I must win, and he went out and did it. So what does that do for the confidence, especially for somebody like Eli Tomac, who, like you said again there, Ricky, tends to build in the second half of the season, and Aaron Plessinger, I honestly, guys, I was kind of choking up listening to his answer there, on the podium because you could see just the emotion coming through him it clearly meant so much to him he's a guy who's been on the podium so many times through his 250 career with star racing yamaha there and you see to be back up there to have revisited and do what he said he was going to do at the beginning of the season he said this was going to be different and he's going through with that and here he is now uh, taking that podium and we still have half a season to go so we might see some more out of him so just quite a special moment there and he mentioned you know the uh, upcoming birth of his uh, child there so just all around, just an incredible sort of interview from him there. And like I said, just so much emotion coming that way. Well, for me, I, Eli Tomac obviously stands out because he gets the win here and he gets his fifth. But uh, Ricky, I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you with this question. He's 24 points down. Daytona is great for him. It always has been. We're going to Arlington where there's three races in one week, a place where he's had a lot of issues in the past. Are you seeing him is still in contention with this thing? Now we've seen Ken Roxon off the podium two times. Uh, Cooper Webb, of course, is very strong. But again, the competition is so deep there at the top, especially with other riders getting back in the mix. Uh, do you think he's too far out of this thing? I know there's a lot of racing left, but again, there's two riders he's going to have to overcome here. 24 points sounds like a lot, but again, he chipped away seven today, going to a place where he hasn't been the best. Of course, Atlanta's uh, looming on the schedule, so I think that could help him there. And of course, Salt Lake, we know how great he is in Salt Lake City. but. Arlington for me, that, that's the big question mark, but do you think the 24 points is too far to overcome with two riders uh, out in front of him? 
Well, I think it is if if Ken Roxon and Cooper Webb are able to keep going one two, and it looks like that's what's going to happen. So you just have to assume that it is too much. However, I think he's going to come to an advantage. He's going to be able to be an advantage for guys like Ken Roxon and Cooper Webb if he can get in between there. So uh, it's it's certainly not over. But, Daniel, he's going to have to win. I mean, he's going to have to win out, in, in, in my opinion. He hasn't had a lot of luck at uh, Dallas like you talked about. He did say he was excited to go to Atlanta. He felt like those, those, those tracks were going to suit his style. But, uh, you know, we got eight races left. He, unfortunately, is in a must situation. And uh, I would rather be in Cooper Webb's situation or, or, or Ken Roxon's situation rather than, rather than Eli Tomac. However, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk to. 50 because there was a really special night. In fact, it was a very green night here in Daytona uh, with Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki rider Cameron McAdoo getting just his second heat win in his 250 career. He then goes on to get his first main event win. Boy, that guy rode well from the moment he went on the track on Friday in media day. It was almost like it was destined to be his weekend. Yeah, it sure was. You watch him, the aggression that he had all weekend long. I mean, he just came out firing. He was riding hard, aggressive. He didn't worry about being, like, perfect and precise. He just knew he was going to let it hang out. Whatever the bike did, he was going to let the bike do. And that's how you got to ride Daytona. It's really hard to ride this track and be super precise. So, uh, great job. It was really fun to watch. You could see the emotion. He talked about it. his mom was in the stands. He drove him here to race the RC Amateur SX in 2016 in a van. So, uh, good, good for him he's tight now he's in the points lead yeah so uh, i can't wait to watch these guys at arlington too very excited have a look at the points by the way justin cooper who came into this race the points leader had a rough night but he did stage a very good comeback ride but mcadoo leads overall he'll have that red plate heading to arlington garrett marchbanks who won here a year ago he had a pretty decent ride tonight as well and hunter lawrence was able to work his way up into the top four he leapfrogged his way up there just ahead of Jalik Swall, but let's go back to Daniel Blair. What did you make of the McAdoo victory? I mean, he did not have the best opening lap. He too, Daniel, had to stage a bit of a comeback, but he was just blisteringly fast. Yeah, he was great. I want to give a shout out to Nick Way. That's his coach who Cameron said on the podium, took a chance on him. And the reason why he said that is Cameron McAdoo has been very, very wild in the early parts of his career. He's he goes for it. He, he, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He gives it everything he has at every minute of the race. And for Nick Way to, to take him in and, and really learn to control him and, and keep him, let, let's say, at 98% of his full potential, because at 100%, things can get a little loose. And he's been that way in his career. So for Nick Way, uh, this was a big win for him as a coach to see a rider like that really get it together, be really smart. And to your point, he had to work for it. He had to chase down Styles Robertson, and he did it so efficiently and so clean. So kudos to Cameron McAdoo and uh, to Nick Way, but I also want to give a shout out to Styles Robertson and Pierce Brown on the podium. I love uh, getting a chance to see the next generation of star. You see these rookie kids, these sophomores come in, and you're wondering which one of these is going to be the real deal. I think we see two of them tonight that are going to be the real deal moving forward. Styles Robertson was fantastic. He said he didn't know what to do out front, which I thought was hilarious because he's a rookie kid. He's here at Daytona. And then Pierce Brown, just an just a rough road. Six months off the bike, or seven or eight months actually with that torn ACL, and to come out here with no gate drops and get on the podium. These two kids are stars. I still like Seth Hammaker too. He's great, but there is some young talent in this series, and we saw a lot of it tonight, and I, and I see them making the move up over the next year or two, and Will, for me, that, that's what it was. it was. It was seeing these kids just coming up and making their presence felt in this 250 class. <laughs> they really made their presence felt on the podium there with you, didn't they? You, you mentioned there what Styles was saying, and they were all fantastic. It was all just, you know, just very raw that was coming out. They were just kind of thinking it and letting us know how they were feeling, which was just fantastic. Great to see a, a new podium up there, to see some fresh faces. But, Daniel, guys, that makes me wonder, you know, what's going to happen here now on, you know, championship picture with these guys? Because uh, we talked about Justin Cooper. But yes, that was a great charge back. Sorry, they're doing some track maintenance by me. Um, yeah, that was a great charge back. But obviously, he wanted to carry the, the red plate. He wanted to keep that. And he's now handed that over very early um, in their title hunt here to Cameron McAdoo, a guy who we thought would definitely be in the picture. But I think a lot of us were kind of at this point with Jeremy Martin going out um, in Orlando there. We were thinking maybe this is Justin Cooper's for the taking here. Well, 
tonight. It, it really didn't look that way, did it? It looked like he's going to have a lot of challenges. So I wonder what Justin Cooper's thinking. Is he, well, kind of setting Daytona aside? This is a very different race. Is he saying, well, I'll, I'll take a little bit of a get out of jail free card here. This was a difficult night. Let's set it aside and, and keep his focus. Because, Ricky, I feel like that's what he's going to need to do here if he wants to fulfill that goal of, um, of taking the title here. He's, he said it's his year. It's his time. Um, and so he needs to get back on track quick here. Well, that's where I say I'm from Missouri. And you know what state that is? That's a show me state. So it's time for him to get after it and... If he's going to win, it needs to do it. Yeah, he had a rough night tonight. So I think if he has a, uh, a more <laughs> smoother going in Arlington, uh, he might get back on track. By the way, speaking of Arlington, we'll see you uh, in just a week's time. This coming weekend, it's the first of a three-race residency in the Lone Star State. And we've got so many storylines, so much excitement, and so much to look forward to. So a brief break. Have a great week. We'll see you next weekend in Arlington. Hi, I'm Will Christian, and thank you all so much for watching. I'm here to remind you to hit subscribe for all the latest Supercross news and highlights. And of course, don't forget to sign up for Peacock Premium. That is now the new home for streaming for all live Supercross events all season long.